Hi, my name is uh, Joe Stebrick, and the reason that I'm doing this is there's not a lot of places to go if you're a professional looking for building science information. There are no real major university courses in North America um, that take into account environmental separation, which is the fundamental basis of building science. So these videos are um, our attempt, or my attempt, to try to transfer the information that I've picked up over the years from people who took me in when I was a youngster and, 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 and taught me. So I owe it to them to tell you what they taught me uh, over all these years. Social media has been a giant irritation of mine. And so after being harassed for many, many years by colleagues and friends, I've surrendered and here I am, YouTube folks. I try to avoid it, but here it is. Um, one of the most misunderstood terms is, is vapor, vapor pressure, and, and, and all it is is water vapor density. So many million molecules per, per cubic foot. We don't use the word water vapor density because normal people and civilians would understand what it means. So we make complicated terms up like vapor pressure, which really means how many molecules are in this space um, per cubic foot of space. Okay, um, so the second law, here's what it actually means. Heat flows from warm to cold. Why? Because. See, we make things a law if we can't derive, its, from, derive it from first principles. So there's no real explanation of why, so we call it a law. And it's not that it's proven. You never prove science. When somebody says the science is settled or the science is proven, that's a journalist or an arts graduate. You can only disprove science. This has not yet been disproven. So it's currently a law. We're not able to really derive it comfortably, but nobody's found a way that it's not true yet. And when we find a way to prove that it's not, or prove that it's not true, then we're going to need another law. You know, Newton was pretty comfortable until Einstein came around. Einstein was pretty comfortable until Niels Bohr came around. Bohr was bored until Feynman came around. Now we're not sure what the heck, you know, that, you know, neat guy from Cambridge, the one that just passed away. So, again, we have a, we have a law and everything is settled until it's proven not to be true all of the time, and then we, we move on. So the second law is currently a law, and I'm just telling you that as an engineer, I don't need to know why. I just need to know that it is. If I know that the heat is always from warm to cold, I can work with that. Huh? Okay. Moisture flows from warm to cold. Why? Because. Right now, how many people have heard of air conditioning? Nodding here. So if it's air conditioned and cool inside and it's hot outside, what direction is the moisture flow? From the outside to the inside. How many people have heard of vinyl wall coverings? Is vinyl vapor open or vapor closed? Vapor closed. So installing vinyl wall coverings on the inside of an air conditioned building would be a stupid thing. Why? Because. Any questions? Well, we need a calculation. No, you don't. Just don't do stupid stuff. Wow, we need something for the file. Okay, uh, well, I can do that. Uh, do you want the cheap calculation or the expensive calculation? What do you recommend, Dr. Stebrick? I recommend the expensive calculation because <laughs> I view it as a tax on stupid people. 
Well, we need something for the file. Well, I need new tires for my Porsche. It's going to work out just fine. <laughs> or you could just say, because. All right, moisture flow is from more to less. Why? Because. You could do this experiment at home, really. If you take something wet and touch something dry, the dry thing becomes wet. <laughs> Son of a bitch, who knew? <laughs> Second law, baby. All right, work with me on this. The ground is wet, and we want the building on top of it to be dry. What direction is the moisture moving? From the ground into the building. If we dig a big hole and we put one floor of that building into the hole and we have concrete and the ground is wet and the inside is dry, the direction of moisture flow is from the outside ground to the inside. So it would be stupid to put a plastic vapor barrier on the inside of my basement framing. Where's my Mainers? Don't do it! It's a trap! <laughs> it's colossally stupid. Well, the Canadians recommend it. Well, not the smart ones. Who's besides Justin Bieber? Mike Holmes. When Canada was playing the United States for the Olympic gold medal in hockey, there was a large billboard just outside of Toronto that said, Loser Gets Holmes and Bieber. So if it's going to get wet from the outside, we want to reduce its wetting from the outside, but to allow it to dry to the inside. Anybody not get that? Who says so? Second law, baby. Now, warm to cold and more to less are two rules for moisture. And most of the time, they act in the same direction. More than 15 times out of 20, in my experience, less than 20 out of 20. So because they act more or less in the same direction, you use warm to cold as a surrogate for more to less. Most of the time, normal people can look at a wall, roof, or foundation, or a building assembly and say, ah, this part is going to be cold. And most of the time, the water ends up on the cold spot. Most people can't wander into a building and sense vapor pressures. And those that can also see dead people. <laughs> so we use temperature as a surrogate for moisture for, for, more, for more to less. Everybody with me on this? Most of the time. Now when they act in opposite directions, more to less always beats warm to cold. Rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, more to less beats warm to cold, but most of the time they're in the same direction. You don't need to do a hydrothermal woofy analysis with what I've just told you. And by the way, when you do it, most of the people do it wrong. So why do it? If you need to do a woofy analysis to figure out what's going on, you don't know enough about the problem to do the woofy analysis. But everybody freaking wants one. So we figure out what the right answer is, and then we do the analysis to make sure it gives us that answer. In other words, we figure things out from first principles. The first principles or field experience constrain the answer. So we use the real world to provide the boundary conditions for the analysis. But why do the analysis? Because everybody freaking wants one. And I, I try to convince people, you don't need it. Well, we need something for the file. Great. Five grand for an analysis. That pays for the program. One time you do it, and you're good to go. But you don't need to do it. If you need to do it, you don't know. Because in order to have it valid, if it's that unusual, the only way to be sure is to do an experiment. And you should only experiment on family, not on clients. Brother-in-laws are the best to experiment on. <laughs> Air flows from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. Why? Because, and gravity acts down. These are all outcomes of the second law. 
It's what you got to know. Now, they don't teach us this. This is the secret handshake that you get in graduate school after you've got your master's and just, as you, if you, just after you've done your oral comprehensives for your doctorate. This is like a secret. Well, why don't we tell undergrads this? Well, then they'd be useful. <laughs> we can't have that. The whole system would be in jeopardy. <coughs> Pretty simple. Warm to cold, more to less. We can't let that stand because it's a simple concept. So we don't talk that way. We say, ah, it's a thermal gradient and it's thermal diffusion and a concentration gradient, it's molecular diffusion. So what's going on? Well, we have, you know, basically molecular diffusion is uh, basically, you know, overpowering and dominating the uh, thermal diffusion. Doesn't that sound intelligent? Well, what does it mean? Well, it ends up on the cold spot most of the time. But you can't say, well, it ends up on the cold spot most of the time. Well, we're going to do our calculation. But you have to know what the answer is before you do the calculation because we're not sophisticated enough to do the calculation correctly. But this is still easy to understand. Thermal diffusion, molecular diffusion, <laughs> let's call it vapor diffusion. Whoa, who understands vapor diffusion? Nobody. Well, it's, I, I don't know, you know. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, vapor diffusion follows the thermodynamic potential. Thermodynamic. Sounds like vegematic, elastomeric. You want to buy it because it's a cool name. And so let's get a map of the thermodynamic potential. The psychopathic chart. Oh, I got curvy lines, bent lines, slope lines, 15 scales. Ah! All this is is a map of more to less and warm to cold, saying that most of the time they're in the same direction, and except when they're not, more to less wins. And you're at this part of the chart where nobody freaking builds unless you're doing chip manufacturing in Indonesia. And who's going to help them? They should be making the chips here in Dearborn. We are, potato chips. <sighs> so everybody's going to want you to do, if, they're not, if you aren't convincing them that you, can't do, you don't need to do a Wolf analysis, they're going to want you to do a, a psychrometric analysis. And at the end of the day, it's your judgment and experience saying the stuff is going to end up on the cold spot most of the time. I'm trying to demystify everything, folks. So you're going to get this gobbledygook report, and what you should be able to do is look at the wall assembly or the roof assembly and say, oh yeah, I can see why that's going to get wet. Or, no, there's no way that's going to get wet based on my experience in this history of these assemblies in this part of the country. So your analysis is wrong. Nothing freaks somebody out when they've got 20 pages of numbers and calculations and all kinds of stuff, and you look at it and says, well, you're wrong. Well, why should we believe you? Well, because I'm smart and handsome and I have gray hair. So there you go. And by the way, I wrote that program. It would be nice if folks subscribe to this channel, and I'll try to keep the humor to uh, absolutely necessary levels. <laughs>